That roar when you ran out just puts goosebumps on the back of your neck. Voss went straight through, Andrew's there! He's just forever looking for an opportunity. Exhilarating football! That's a good sign of a good team. Accelerates and punches through them! And he's only going to get better. And the hammer stands them up! And Queensland going to do it again! Well, thanks for joining us on this episode of Queenslander. As always, with Lockie and the King. This week, it's all about the resurgence of your Broncos, Lockie. And I tell you, one person who's loving the resurgence, Cam Smith, the golfer. We did an interview with him the other day for Nine News. He's getting ready for the Masters, which you'll see on Wide World of Sports next week over in Augusta. He was, he was all up and about after that Broncos win, and if you actually. Watch him on the live tour with his Ripper GC team. He's got the maroon and gold ready to go mm. there for the Broncos too. But if you were in the crowd, hard not to be impressed by the Broncos with that win? Oh, it was easily their best performance of the year. Um, you know, they had a couple of key players out uh, playing a team that was in form at home. And, yeah, I, I think defensively was, was very good. And then they their attack looked really sharp as well. Considering, like I said, there was a few key players out. But... I think having Reynolds back made a big difference, but but mm. I think one to seventeen, that's been their best performance all year. Yeah, yeah, I agree with you, Lockie. Reynolds uh, being uh, out uh, has cast a little bit of doubt from uh, experts around the place, uh, but certainly his performance, they just step up. Um, he, he doesn't sort of uh, in, come out with any match-winning performances himself, but inspires others, does a, a very good job in doing so. But uh, it was a wonderful team effort. It wasn't, you know, an individual effort from one guy in particular um, that smashed the uh, the opposition. It was uh, a fantastic performance and I think it's done enormous things for their confidence. I think the rain played into the hands of the Broncos too. You were there, Lockie, just before kickoff, it just mm -hmm. poured down and then Adam Reynolds with his kicking game yeah. maybe adjusting was just too smart. Yeah, I think those conditions are made for someone like Adam Reynolds. Look, Chad Townsend has no slouch with the kicking mm. boot either, but I think Adam just, it just, you know, he's one and if not, you know, but him and Cleary are the best general play kickers in the game. It makes all the difference. And I and I think the Cowboys who had scored the most points in the competition going into that game just didn't handle the conditions mm. nowhere near as well as the Broncos. I was surprised the Broncos played so well without Payne Hartz and mm. Reese Walsh. Were you surprised? That... Well I think the key was Paddy Carrigan. Like, you know, no no pain. Um, Pat really needed to stand up and show that leadership and create that momentum that, you know, his back line needs for time and space, and he was outstanding. Mm. And what does it say about their depth now, Wall? That was probably an issue with the Broncos the last couple of years, but now they have a couple of key players out. You've got guys like Tristan Saylor and Corey mm. Oates coming to replace. That's, that's a very strong depth. Yeah, and no doubt that was a standout feature, Adam. Um, and everybody probably was uh, was suggesting that um, you know without a couple of the key players the Broncos won't do it. That was that was fantastic, uh, the way that they worked together as a team and uh, uh, the team effort that they uh, produced on the, uh, on that occasion I think has done enormous things for their confidence. It certainly will be a, a massive boost for them, and uh, there'll be a lot of people um, that were Broncos uh, critics uh, certainly turning around and saying, well, perhaps uh, we better keep them. They are a chance. Who caught your attention, Lockie, outside the regular first graders in the team? I'm going to say Jaden Hunt. Uh, the, he was on debut for the Broncos mm. in the second row. To me, a second row always has a good game if you don't notice them, mm. if they're just doing yeah. their job, and he did that as well. Yeah, he did really well. Um, just a real professional job, you know, did what he had to do in defence and did what he had to do in attack. And uh, look, Fletcher Baker, when he, yeah. he you know, he stepped up. He was up. better, yeah. He, was ste he stepped up and then... Yeah, we're, we're just there's Tristan, who I know we're going to talk about soon. Um, and, you know, Xavier Willison was good when he was mm. on there. And then, obviously, Corey Oates. Um, yep. I thought he was impressive, too, yeah. when he came on in the back row. What about the roar <laughs> when he came on? And it was, I thought I'd missed something in the game, like someone might have scored a try or a big Like hit. a streaker or something. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Th that was almost like a state of origin rule. Yeah. It was a bit like... Um, like a Wally Lewis type. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, so, I mean, um, it was, but it was, yeah, it was the same. I was like... Like, I, I could hear a few people clapping behind me just sitting on the sideline, but then the whole crowd just got behind it. It was awesome. Yeah, yeah I think Corey Oates has uh, reminded his father-in-law that he may not be uh, the favourite uh, Bronco in the family anymore. Yeah. Uh, Gene Miles, of course. Uh, but that was uh, that was a fantastic effort. And the, the way that, as you said, Lockie, the crowd got behind them. 
Uh, it was uh, it was fantastic, but uh, certainly the uh, the way that they uh, they took that confidence about it and displayed a wonderful team effort rather than one guy having a go and and doing the best he could and uh, and, and not being able to to come up with it. It was a fantastic team performance from them. I was talking to Oatsy afterwards too. He said Breno was dirty with that try score because he, he put the grubber <laughs> kick in for himself and he kind of like cut him off and question mark if he was on side, but didn't change the result there. Yeah, you alluded to Tristan Saylor there um, before Lockie. Is there a way you can fit him into the 17 when Reese Walsh comes back? Well, I think it becomes a shootout between him and Corey Oates. Yeah. You know? So after the, the, the Penrith game, <coughs> you know, Kevy. Uh, acknowledge that you know maybe he does need to carry a utility just to cover the, an injury to an outside back. So um, you know, the Corey was that that player the week just gone. Um, but when Reese comes back, you just assume that it'll be between Corey and, and Tristan that, that gets that that potential spot on the bench. Yeah. Hey, would you be worried at the Broncos? I know there was an offer for Tristan Saylor to go to English Super League last year. Would you be worried, Wal, that an NRL club is trying, going to try and poach Sailor? Because he, he's class. He, he's yeah. an NRL player every week. Well, I guess the Broncos could be a little bit concerned about it. There's no doubt uh, after that performance. Um, but uh, I think Tristan would be very happy about that. Yeah. Um, he'd be uh, e extremely comfortable with the performance that he put in. Um, there'll be an argument in the family who's the best yeah. uh, coming up. I think that's, uh, that's coming. There's no doubt about that whatsoever. But um, he just was in the right place at the right time. And, and I thought that was a quality performance for me. He's a, he's a very instinctive footballer. Like, mm. you know, his old man uh, played plenty of footy and he told me plenty of times how, how good he was. <laughs> but, yeah, he's a big, powerful athlete. And, um, but Tristan can play fullback but can also play in the half. So he yeah. reads the game very well. And, and that helps when you're playing at fullback because you can, if you've got that, that, uh, that vision, you can sort of, you know, judge where the kicks are coming and when they're coming. And the other, look, it's a credit to him too as well because he... You know, he's had to start all over again yeah. and work his way back into the system. He's doing it at the Broncos behind someone like Reese Walsh. So he's, he's kept his head up and he's playing some great football and, and mm. th there's only going to be good things that are going to come from that. He yeah. either gets himself a spot in the 17 at the Broncos or there's going to be other clubs out there wanting to sign him. Yeah. And that's... Yeah, that's all he's doing. I thought his positional play was fantastic. The way he, he, he might have been standing on one side of the, the paddock um, and it made his way around, put himself, injected himself at the right place at the right time. And um, there are a lot of people that, um, you know, mightn't have uh, had too much uh, about him, um, you know, had sa said too much about him uh, previously. But I'll bet after that performance, they'll certainly start talking about him now. That, that was a good effort, a yeah, very good effort. And the other part, that you know, Kevy talks about at the time. When I see it when I watch him, he's always pointing and he's always talking, like yeah. he's always communicating, and that's that's really uh, crucial if you're a fullback, both with the football and without it. Mm. He's very intelligent. You see teams uh, travelling, players always got the headphones on or the Nintendo Switch. He's always got a book in his hand. If you see yeah. him at like the airport or the bus or the Broncos, he's all, he's always reading a book. So hopefully we get to see plenty more of uh, Tristan Saylor throughout the NRL. But the Cowboys. They head into that game 3 and 0, their first loss of the season. Well, do you think, upon reflection, that 3 and 0 start flattered them a bit based on what we saw at Suncorp Stadium? Yeah, well, it certainly does appear that way now, and uh, um, it was the disappointment of, uh, of the loss, I think, which was uh, the most effective. Um, or it will play an enormous role for the players. I'll sit down and take a take a look at it. Um, I don't think the coach was uh, was too happy at all. He didn't see as though that there was uh, too much from uh, from the key players um, injected into uh, into that game, and it really was um, quite disappointingly a very flat performance. Yeah, I think they just got a little bit ahead of themselves. You know, mm. probably. Uh, What's the saying? They've read too many newspaper. Yeah. We don't read much newspaper these days, but they're reading too much about themselves. You know, I think they went into that game um, probably not prepared for the conditions, and then B probably not prepared for the, I guess, the aggressive nature of the Broncos' defence, and it, it rattled them. I, they made something like 17 errors in the game, and I think I heard the coach in the press conference say that 12 of those errors were from the back five. Yeah. yeah, there's a lot of drop ball at the back. And then when you mm. drop a ball early in the tackle count or even play one, like it, you, you're handing the ball over in a dangerous field position. So, yeah. look, they, they obviously can play a lot better than what they did the other night. Um, 
But, yeah, I think they just got a little bit ahead of themselves. Okay. So, do you just think it's mental with them to turn it around? Oh, look, I, I've got no doubt they'll come back out. Like, they'd be, they'll be, like, really disappointed with their performance individually. The coach is obviously, you know, he, he's already been into them um, publicly. So they'll, they'll have a big week. Who are they playing? The Titans. The so Titans. good luck, Titans. Yeah, is it in... Mm. T- Sunday afternoon in Townsville. Townsville, yeah, Townsville. right. Well, they'll be on. Yeah. They'll be on, you know. It, it, it is a mental thing, you know. You yeah. can... You can go through a few weeks and be playing football and winning games and then you, you start to forget about what it is, why you're winning. Mm. And they got caught up the other night. Again, Broncos, full credit to them with their performance, but yeah, they'll be hard to beat this week. I think you hit the nail on the head with the back three. They get so much energy out of uh, Felty, Murray Taolungi and Scott Drinkwater. And yeah. Those moments where they drop the bomb, they just completely yeah. drop their head. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, one player who stood up, one of your favourites, I know, um, uh, well... Tom Dearden, that chase on Selwyn Cobbo, how good was that to see that? Fantastic. Uh, to see that uh, uh, that taking place, um, that's inspirational, um, certainly for uh, for all the players uh, around him. And he's a, he's a wonderful young kid. Um, just puts in every effort uh, possible, just didn't give up. And um, it was uh, it was one of those moments, you know, it, they mightn't have been on the, the winning side, but uh, to see that uh, that take place, um, I'm sure there were plenty of his teammates thinking, well, uh, I've got a bit of an IOU out here. Um, he's putting up efforts like that. It's about time I started to do the same sort of things. That was, that was terrific. It's one of those moments of a game that uh, you like to be able to pass on to the champions of tomorrow, the young kids, and say, just watch this, watch how he did it. And it... Uh, it really was very inspirational. Well, that was a classic, um, you know, never give up. Because mm. when he, it was happy, when Cobbo went straight past me on the sideline, I saw Tommy Dean <laughs> coming across and I thought, he's no chance. Yeah. yeah. He's no chance. Yeah. But then as, as the angle helps, but still, Cobbo did, and I just thought, no way. Uh, you're all running for, you know, for nothing. Yeah. Yeah. But full credit to Tommy and, um, you know, while they didn't win the game, I think that'll be one of the, the highlights of the year for the Cowboys. Yeah. yeah, definitely. I think Cobbo took it too easy a bit. Like, if you go back and look at it, I think he underestimated Tom Dino. I think he just thought he had yeah. a little bit too much pace for him. Yeah, I think Tom also angled his chase yeah. very well. That was a, a, a key point to it. If you sort of run where you see them at that time, uh, nine times out of ten, you're not going to catch them. It's where you intend to get them and you find that they're going to um, be around about that position that makes it so much easier. Yeah, how good is seeing that old school legs tackle as well? Yeah. yeah. Oh, look at... It was... You know, in the wet, and he just slides out. <laughs> you know, like it's a reward for the effort. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. Uh, I guess Selwyn, uh, when he gets in the clear next time, uh, yeah, because he's, he's typically he'll 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 be smiling when he's running yeah. the try line, but yeah. he might just need to knuckle down <laughs> a bit earlier and just get the job done. Yeah. He's already played that one <laughs> Origin game for Queensland at Suncorp Stadium. Uh, Tom did, and so. You've got Dearden, you had Ezra Mam and Billy Slade has extended 34-man squad, I think it was, earlier this year. So they're the logical replacements for either a Munster or a DC if they get injured. If, say Origins tomorrow, who are you picking in the halves? If you've got a spot up in the halves, do you go Dearden ahead of Ezra just based on that one-game experience and he's a little bit more experienced at NRL level? I think it depends what number. Yeah, OK. Yeah, because, like, I think Tom would be a 7 um, before bit, yeah. before Ezra would yeah. be, yeah. and but Ezra's you know if you're going to go like for like like Ezra's a lot closer to Munster, and Tom's a lot closer yeah. to DCE. Yeah. So it just depends on what jersey you want to give him, what role. Yeah, but mm. you'd ha- be happy enough you guys to see them in Origin. They they do the job. You're confident. Oh yeah. 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 And yeah. they're coming through the system, and they're they're mm. understanding what it takes. And I mean Ezra scored three tries in the grand final last year, so you mm. can't say he's not a big game player. Yeah, he's he's produced it at the toughest level, uh, Lockie. You're, you're dead right there, and uh, Tom will, you know, he's he's already produced it at the toughest as well. So um, certainly, you know, it, there'll be plenty of faith. No, what no matter what the decision is. You've also got Sam Walker waiting in the wings as well too. Mm. So a couple of halves there for the Maroons in the future. Let's move up to the top of the table. Hard to believe the Dolphins are the top of the table. Assisted, I know, by that by This week they play the Tigers at Suncorp Stadium. Hard to believe that this is first versus six now, two teams on a roll. But the Dolphins top of the table after that round one shocker against the Cowboys. Uh, well, 
You know, how important, looking back, the changes that Wayne Bennett up, made after round one to kind of draw a line in the sand? Yeah, it uh, certainly was uh, was tough decisions that, uh, that needed to be made. And, uh, you know, when it was mentioned the first time that they were on top of the table, I actually thought, hang on, hang on that... That's not right. <laughs> yeah. Check it again. Um, so... There's there's a certain um, bit of irony about uh, uh, the position that they are sitting on the ladder, but any team that's coached by Bennett, you know that they're going to uh, be taught uh, the right way to do things. Um, the desperation that they need to display in uh, virtually every performance they go out uh, with. Um, and they have a coach that turns um, very good players into even better players and uh, first-class performers uh, that mark their own card every time that they play and uh, they never give themselves too many raps and um, you know we uh, we keep talking about Wayne uh, he certainly deserves the uh, the gratitude that he uh, that he gets um, if you're going to be taught and taught by the best um, you your performances are going to be there at the uh, the most difficult times yeah after round one who would have thought that they yeah. sit there um, they turned it around really quick made a couple of changes and that's obviously comes down to a lot of experience from the coach. You know, he's been there mm. numerous times over the years and knew what strings to pull. They had a good, like a, an amazing performance in round two against the Dragons, and they got confidence off the back of that and then the bye, and then you know they went down to down to, um, to the Gold Coast and another good win. So I, I would so after round one, their defence was woeful, but they completely turned that around and that's yeah. been the cornerstone of their last two wins. Well, Adam, you and I went down to a Dolphins training session uh, just to watch it and um, they were under a little bit of pressure at, uh, at the time, a little bit of it, um, but it was just a typical Bennett training session the next time around, just moseying across uh, one side of the field uh, to talk to uh, one of the players, spend uh, 15, 20 seconds talking to him and then gradually shift across the other he's he's inspirational in in what he provides to a player uh, the the talks that he has with them are, are very simple um, just getting them to, to try and produce the football that they're quite capable of and uh, uh, they wouldn't be in uh, in the in the Dolphins outfit being coached by Wayne Bennett if he hadn't recognized that they do have talent to display yeah, it's one thing I always notice at um, Dolphins training or Wayne Bennett training sessions he walks over and Maybe one or two or three players he picks and has a word to. Can you remember that back in the Broncos days? Like you, who, who'd, who'd get the chats from Wayne Bennett? Yeah, I think it would just be just key players that he knows. Maybe they're working on, individually, they're working on some stuff in their own game yeah. and he, he picks it up and he goes yeah. over and talks to them. Other times, uh, yeah, he's, he's, he's sprayed players too, but he'll, he'll spray them in front of the rest of the team just, uh, just to put them in their, uh, in their box. But, yeah, look, he's... I see. He's been around for so long, and he's been so successful that what comes out of his mouth, the the players listen to it, mm. and they buy into it, and that's really critical for a coach. Mm. I remember Gordon Tallis saying, uh, telling a story. Steve Renoff didn't train a lot, like Justin Hodges didn't train a lot, and he went off the field one day, and Gordy said to Wayne, "How come he only has to train half a session?" And Wayne goes, "Well, you can score three or four tries a game, but you can train half a session as well." So yeah. Wayne, good at putting people in their place. Well, I think Gordy started to take on that role after Pearl retired. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> he inherited it. Yeah. And uh, as former playmakers yourself, what have you made about the game management skills of Isaiah Katoa? So he was. He was left out of the team for round one, but he's come back in. He hasn't missed a beat. Well, I, th mm. I think um, what, you know, round one, I just felt like the Dolphins' attack was very predictable. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and bringing him in, he's still learning the art or the trade of managing a game, but he's still got a, an element of unpredictability about him. So I think he's, um, while he's still learning the management of, of, of a game, he, he creates something there in that team that um, only he can provide. So it's obviously been a, a good call to get him in there and he's been good the last couple of wins. Yeah, his individual skills are very good. Um, you can see that uh, whenever he gets the ball, there's an opportunity awaiting. It'll depend on um, just how desperate he, uh, he applies himself, but boy, boy, it just seems to be the right place at the right time. And uh, that um, pretty much... Every time uh, there's an opportunity, he'll uh, he'll make it uh, even uh, an even bigger chance of coming off. He's a 
a, a very talented young man, and I'm going to be quite interested to see how far he goes. He he just seems like he's uh, he's he's got the ball in his hand, um, and he's ready to you know tear strips off the opposition defence. He gives him spark. Gives yeah, him he spark. does. Yeah. Yeah. He copped a few whacks in that game too, taking the ball to the line, mm -hmm. which is always good for your confidence. And they've re-signed him to the end of 2028, I think, as well. So that'll be good for uh, his long-term security. From the top of the ladder all the way down to the bottom of the ladder, the Titans, it can't seem to get much worse. If you're Des Hasler, what's on your to-do list to improve the team? What's top of that list? It's a long list. Oh, the yeah. first thing to do is defence. Yeah. I, I feel... Like they just, they're still, the players are still trying to work out how to play Des Hasler football. You know, yeah. like he's obviously got a system defensively and in attack that's probably a little bit different to what they've been used to. And it's just taken them a bit of time to get into rhythm with that. And their confidence is now down. So um, I always think, you know, if your confidence is down, the, the, if you can just focus on minimising the amount of points you let in, then it obviously takes pressure off your attack. Yeah. So for mine, it needs to start with the defensive system. Mm. Yeah, I think it's going to be interesting. Obviously, the defence, you're, you're right, Lockie, that plays a key role. Uh, but they'll also... I, I'm not quite convinced that we, we are seeing the... the the best 13 on display yeah. every week. I think there's going to be changes there, and um, you know it's very easy to, to say when when the team has uh, has lost a couple of games. Uh, but uh, but Des, uh, he's he's one of the guys that um, he, he he's very much a, a thinking man, um, and uh, will go to enormous lengths. Uh, I spoke to Paul Vorton about him uh, one day, and he said um, something about Desi. Just um, whenever you go to talk to him, you know that he's not listening to you. He's thinking about something else. You'll keep nodding his head and uh, uh, and move off he's uh, he's a guy that um, puts all attention into repairing uh, what needs to be and uh, and certainly they, they haven't been that good I obviously it's uh, it's it's only early in the season and uh, they will certainly get better um, but um, the adjustment that they're uh, they're making to the coach is taking a little while longer than most expected uh, they've lacked spark in attack as well we've been told they're not going to change up their spine for this week so Tanner Boyd at a 7-4 and at 6, Jaden Campbell at yeah. 1, Randall at 9. Do you think they need to revisit that? Oh, look, Jaden's only just come back. Yeah. You know, so I think they just need more time together. I think Jaden will get better as he's play, playing more games. I thought AJ in the centres had a couple of... He did, like, he, sh he showed a couple of times the speed that he can... Mm. that he's got. And he gets around the outside of his man pretty quick. So I think they need to try and find a way to use him more and use his speed. And I think Jaden, um, again, while they're trying to understand that the, the, the way Des wants to play footy, um, I just think those guys, like, they'll just get better as they get more time in those positions. Yeah, like I think you hit the, uh, the nail on the head there. The key point was the Des Hasler style of footy, the way he wants it to be played. Um, a lot of the players mightn't be... Uh, um, they mightn't understand too much about it or it's taken them quite some time uh, to get used to it and, uh, and to be able to play that game rather than their own individual style of, of playing. So it, it could take a while, but um, I've got no doubt his previous performance is dead, Des in charge of the, uh, the various sides that, uh, that he's been in charge of. Um, he's managed to make the adjustment and it's come around. Uh, this one, though, seems to be a, a little slower. Yeah, I fear for the confidence of Tanner Boyd. He's just so down yeah. in confidence. Yeah, he's, well, he's, you know, he's, I guess a lot of people are talking about his position and, um, you know, I, I guess that's a challenge for the coach to, mm. to work out how he gets the best out of him. You know, like he's a kid still. Yeah. And, you know, it feels like most of the heat's on him. Yeah. So this is an opportunity for the coach to tr try and, you know, wrap, wrap his arm, arm around him and try and get him to... Give yeah. him some confidence to perform. Yeah. It's, it's a bit of a turning point for him. You know, he can either come out of this and be a real learning curve for him, or you know, it could it could ruin his confidence. Yeah, and Desi's got the experience. I agree, Lockie. Um, it'll depend on he'll he'll understand um, now that he's sort of getting to know him uh, a little bit better um, how hard he can actually go in to try and repair his game or, uh, or he's got to stay soft and, and just dangle a carrot in, uh, in front of it. Desi's uh, had enormous uh, respect in, uh, in, in difficult, uh, at difficult times when uh, you need to make a key decision like that. So I, I can't see him failing, but um, plenty of Gold Coast fans are wishing that uh, it comes sooner rather than later. Yeah, I'd almost look at going four and at seven, 
Brimson at six to spark the attack. If if Tanner doesn't turn around and maybe look look to that, and then AJ gets his hands on the ball a bit more. I think he's got to really simplify yeah. Tanner's game. Like yeah. he's got a good long kicking game. Mm. Like, like I think if he's just about getting his forwards. You know, focused on getting some ruck speed and then he's delivering the ball to Forum when he needs it and he focuses on his kicking game. Like, that's all he has to think about. Mm. Yeah. Um, don't worry about, you know, at this stage, you know, trying to run and take the line on. Just just keep it really simple. And as you build into the game, then your confidence will start to come and that's when it'll, it'll start to come natural. But at the moment, he's just got to come back to the real basics of, of his game mm. and do that well. And their bench, I think they need to look at rejigging their bench. They don't get any spark off their bench. You look at the Dolphins game, they were up 10-0. Max Plath gets sin bin. They regress when players come off from the bench. So I'd almost look to start Verrills as that kind of like more old-school traditional hooker and then look to kind of get someone who can um, spark them off the bench. But we've been told they'll make a few changes this week. We have that anomaly where we always record the show an hour before the team's announced. But we've been told they'll make a few changes, but they'll keep the spine together. I do think Jaden will make a difference as he gets yeah. a bit more game time. Yeah. Mm. And uh, one player who did make a bit of a difference, uh, David Fafita. He's uh, now back in the team. How much will they rely on him now that Tino's out? Like, he's the senior guy to spark them up a bit. The forward pack-wise. D- yeah, right? just a different position, though. You know, yeah. like, a Tino's that inspirational take a hit up and lead from the front. And maybe Dave could, you know, could do more of that, you know, instead of just stay, staying on the edge, maybe just get the ball one off and, and try and inspire his team that way. But, he, you know, Dave's, Dave sort of really needs to focus on what his role is in the team. But if he's got the energy and the ability to get in there and, and take a few hit ups, then I'm sure that can only be positive. Mm. Yeah, I'm sure uh, the coach will be doing his his level best to uh, to make sure he uh, he inspires. Um, but, yeah, you're right, he's... Uh, he's He's, he's too powerful to be ignored as a, uh, as a, as a man not to be watched uh, by the opposition. Um, the time will tell, but uh, he's, he's just got too much quality about him to be ignored. He's, he's, he's going to... Well, he's got to reach his best. Um, the big question is, how long is that going to take? Yeah. Well, I think, he, I think the, probably the best way to say he, he needs to go chase the game, not wait mm. for the game to come to him. Yeah. 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 And he's got that clause in his contract round yeah. 10. He could potentially seek a release to another club. If they're bottom of the ladder still, do you think he entertains what, what, that? What round? So at round 10, he can yeah. potentially go to another club. But the issue mm. with that is he's got to get another NRL club to take on his salary. And he's a million-dollar-a-year player. And that's, that's a lot of money to be paying for a back row. Yeah, I think there's probably yeah. more pressing issues at the moment yeah. for all of them there. They just need to start playing, you know, collectively as a team but individually as, as best they can. So, look, I, I, you know, Dave made the decision to leave the Broncos, go down there, and he, he uh, re-signed with them. Um, I, I think, you know, his heart's there. Yeah. Obviously winning helps, but... The only way they're going to start winning is to, you know, do it together. Yeah, and when he re-signed Lockie, he declared just how happy he was there and his intentions, um, virtually that he was having a carrot dangled in front of him. What an inspiration it was going to be to have uh, somebody like Des Hasler and a lot of the people, uh, the, the critics, were saying that, um, well, this will be a, a quality performance coming up this year from him because uh, Hasler gets the best out of every player that he's ever had uh, under his services. So it'll be interesting to see whether that comes comes. True or not? At some point they'll break through, and when they do, all these guys for feeder for and, mm. and Jade, and they'll all be a big part of it, and they'll all get confidence out of it. So at some point it'll turn. Just hopefully for them, it turns sooner rather than later. Yeah. Well, as a Cowboys supporter, hopefully it doesn't turn on Sunday <laughs> afternoon up in town. So and hopefully the Cowboys get back to their winning ways. But round five kicks off on Nine's Wide World of Sport. Another blockbuster down in Melbourne. The Broncos back in form, taking on the Melbourne Storm with Cameron Munster back in the team. This year, NRL on 9 is your one-stop shop for all footy. That's right, Freddie. Not about the highlights. Action. Seven days a week. Billy and Gus podcast. Get that on your drive on the way home. Immortal behaviour. Grab a seat on the couch for that. And, of course, my favourite, Freddie and the Young. The best footy brains, the biggest games. Don't trust the algorithm. Subscribe to NRL on 9 and get all your entertainment there.